So what is up? How do you make quick time events in Dreams PS4? This right here is a zombie game. So this thing is a zombie. Think of a zombie and it grabs you. Then you have to uh, press a button in time, a set amount of times in order for it to cancel the grab. And then, you know, you could push it away and whatnot. What you can do is set a remote control sensor on remote. So set this to remote right here, or you can use force possess. Oh, well, no, you, it needs to be on remote. What am I talking about? And you could either put it outside of this timeline or inside of this timeline. Then what you want to do, whatever button um, is active, uh, is a part of your quick time event, plug that into move to next out for it. For me, it is triangle. So I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like just so you can get a good representation visually. So I press triangle enough times and voila. The reason we're not using variables is because if we were to use a variable for, um, one monster then pretty much it would affect every monster's animation if that makes sense so instead we use a selector you can also put the timeline of the chewing or whatever your quick time event thing is inside of a individual puppet if you're going to clone these things so really this is just uh the display that the um you know the quick time event has activated it's just a text displayer what you can do is set it on the outside or on inside of a microchip and uh, make sure it's off but inside the timeline while the animation for the quick time event is activated or whatever kind of logic you have for it make sure that there's a keyframe that turns it on make sure this keyframe is not on keep changes repeat not on keep changes this keyframe also turns on this control sensor down here it won't need to turn on this control sensor if this control sensor is in here and in remote so however you want to do it Next, uh, make sure you know the button that it needs to represent uh, how you get out of the quick time event. Make sure that that is plugged into move to next outport. Make sure it is E. Or if you want it to be a harder type of quick time event, you can lower it and then add more selectors. I have mine on pass through. And I also have it in the power port. I have the triangle button in the power port also. So the triangle button's here and here of this control sensor that could also be in here if you wanted it in here. Make sure that the keyframe that lights on your display for the quick time event to show whenever it shows the quick time event has started, make sure it is as long as the animation. Um, of the quick time event or whatever your logic is and if you place this in here make sure it is also as long as the animation or your logic the selector can be as uh, long as you want it to be if it's shorter then it's going to be harder to complete the quick time event if that makes sense because if you press triangle and this is shorter then it's just harder to complete it make sure your timeline that has all the quick time event stuff in it Make sure it is set to once. I might have to plug up my controller into a charger just to let you guys know. Um, then what you can do is put a trigger zone either inside the microchip if you want the trigger zone to follow your care, uh, the, the enemy or whatever it is or you can place it outside of the character. But if you wanted to follow the character, put it inside of here and then, you know, make it to where it's around the character like so. Or it'd be like that if you put it in here and then if you move the character, if the character moves, then this thing will follow it because it's inside of there. Then what you want to do is set up your trigger zone, uh, however you want to set it up. If there's a tag inside of your main character, you just press tag and then you just, you know, use the label and put it there. Or you can use scene element 
connect the scene element to your character. One of the two. Or you could even use labels, whatever you want to use. Whenever this activates, whenever this senses that character, it turns on this animation. What this does also makes it to where the control sensor for this guy turns off to where he can't move anymore. So either disable controls with an on off switch that's inside of this timeline or you could just turn it off altogether. If you disable controls, you'll want to do that if uh, your character is on possessable and on force possession if you don't want to hear the empty activation sound. Or if it's on remote controllable, then you can do it this way. Or you can also use a keyframe that turns this to none. You can use this keyframe to just turn it to none, I think. And then your character won't move while the quick time event has started. Like so, if we if we hover above this, it's pretty much a cutscene. That's what a quick time event is. Or is it deactivate controls or disable controls where it says it? Yeah, that's where it says it. So you need to think of these things as cutscenes. So... Here is your selector. The selector's ending is on E. So you press triangle a certain amount of times. For me, it's triangle. And then you get to this timeline right here. It activates this timeline. What this timeline does Let's see here. It has a keyframe that sets this to sustain. Turns off this trigger zone so you can get away. Has the hurt animation for your zombie. And also has an on switch inside of it that resets the timeline. And that should be effectively how you make quick time events. That's how you make quick time events in Dreams PS4. At least my method of making it was selectors. The selectors, we use those because, um, again, using variables, if this character relied on the same variables, another character then its timeline would be affected whenever a zombie over here is chewing on him. And you might see that this character or zombie uh, starts falling back whenever this one falls back because they're both relying on the same variable. When you're using selectors instead of variables, it makes it to where every quick time event will be their own thing. You'll have to remember though, whenever your character is um, being chewed on and hurt or whatever it is for your quick time event, if there's two of these things, you want to make it to where um, the other one's trigger zone can't activate while there's one already going, if that makes sense. And you can also make it to where cameras and stuff, you could put cameras inside of here if you wanted to make it fancy um, and stuff like that. You could use, you, you could do that too. Um, so play around with it. If I forgot anything, I haven't done tutorials in a while, so if I forgot anything, let me know in the comment section below, but I shouldn't have forgot anything. Um, I have mine on possessable, force possession, hidden, and I also have a global variable out here that uh, hides the imps, not a global variable. global settings and uh, I have this on don't allow imps if you have a camera out then uh, let's see then cameras can also hide imps so if you're using a camera don't forget to hide the imp there and there might be a place down here to hide the imps if there's not 
So um, this is how you do it. This is how you do quick time events. I also have mine on uh, 10 ports, just so you guys know. I have mine fully on 10 ports. I'm just trying to make sure I haven't forgot anything. Oh, yeah, the tag. Well, I think I explained that. Um, I think I explained that. This is off. But this turns it on. It's not on keep changes. I don't think any of these are on keep changes. And then there's your animation and your selector and you can put this in there if you want to. And then you can put this timeline inside of your puppet if you want to or whatever timeline um, is connected to the detected. You can also put this inside of the logic too or inside of the puppet microchip too so that way you can clone these things, make a couple bad guys. All right, I think that is it. I think that is it. Don't forget that this keyframe puts this to sustain. And this resets the timeline. The reason this puts it to sustain is because if it reset the timeline while this is on once, it would make it to where it loops over and over again. All right, guys. Peace out. I think. Yeah. Oh, wait. One more thing. Um, if you want to get it to where this thing turns, just uh, press um, L1 and square and make it to where these things turn on with this and then the tags right here. You might want to turn off auto look for your thingies also. And I think, uh, I think that'll do it, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my channel playlist for individual tutorials on logic, sculpting, animation, music, more. And check out my channel on, I mean, my Young Tech's YouTube on Dreams and follow me there. I am making games. I've made fighting games. And that's one that I'm working on right now. I'm going to go ahead and save this. So yeah, your boy knows what he's doing. Uh, follow me on Dreams. I'm right here. Peace out.